Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, first, just want to say thanks to everyone who watched my uh, collaboration video with Kuhn. I got some really nice positive feedback on that, and uh, you know, gives me some good motivation for what to do in the future. Also, I know a lot of you guys are kind of a little less motivated to watch this kind of algorithms-based series, so um, I'll do a low-level design in the near future to, to satisfy all of you. But for the meantime, let's go ahead and talk about hash maps. Hash maps are fun. Um, in particular, I personally have been getting probed a lot recently, and as a result, the load factor of myself has gone up quite a bit. But uh, yeah, let's talk about what all that means and get into this PowerPoint. Alrighty, so hash maps, what are they? Basically, the general background are that hash maps are a specific implementation of an associative array or a map. So basically, that's going to have some keys and it's going to have some corresponding values. As you can see on the slide, I have demonstrated a map right there. Moving onwards, basically, the general way that hash maps work are they are built off of this concept called a hash function. Now, I've spoken about hash functions plenty of times on this channel in the past as they pertain to systems design, but just to try and give a more formal concept of what's actually going on here, the only job of a hash function is really to take some domain of potential keys and map it to a range of potential values. Generally speaking, the range of potential values that the keys can be mapped to is going to be smaller, and a good hash function is not only going to be operating in you know O of one constant time, but more importantly, it's going to be distributing those keys relatively evenly throughout the range. So for example, if we're just you know mapping a bunch of characters to you know a bunch of integer indices, then a good example of a hash function might be to go ahead and take the ASCII of the key and then take the modulus of the length of that array. Okay, so in terms of the implementation, as you can see, we're starting out with um, an empty array and basically we have our hash function, which is we're gonna call H and then we're going to take in some keys and output a value zero to seven, where zero to seven are the indices of the underlying array. And basically those are known as buckets. So we have eight buckets in this implementation here. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and put a key in. The key in this case is Jordan. It's going to hash to basically index six of the array. And there we can go ahead and put our key in. Similarly, if I wanted to do another put, I could go ahead and do that. And now that uh, value is going to index two. And the final aspect of this is if we want to do a delete, we can simply again hash the key to be deleted and then go ahead and remove that from the array. So at least on kind of a first look, we can say that all of these operations are going to be O of one because our hash function is O of one and all we're doing is actually accessing the element in the array. So pretty simple stuff for the most part, but uh, you know, it's not actually all that simple and we're going to talk about why. So let's imagine that we're adding another key to our previous hash map. So as you can see, I'm doing another put, and the issue is that the hash of this key is actually going to be the same as the hash of an existing key that was in our map. So this key is going to hash to two, and now what we have is called a collision, where basically we need to be able to figure out a way to differentiate between the two values and store them both in our hash map. So there are a couple of ways that you can actually go ahead and do this. And these are known as collision strategies, and I'm gonna talk about two major ones. The first is chaining, where basically you create a linked list of all the hash entries in a bucket. So basically a bucket, as opposed to just having a single element, now is going to have a linked list of key value pairs. And then the other option, which is pretty similar to chaining, but a little bit different, is probing, where basically once you get the place where a key should go, if there's already an element there, you basically keep moving up through the hash map until you find an empty place to actually put the key value pair. So let's demonstrate both of those. As you can see, we have chaining right here, where at index two, basically now we have Zuckerberg Ugly being chained to Jordan's wallet empty. And while we haven't really spoken about linked lists very much uh, formally, I'll address those in a future video. The general premise right now is that uh, there's a really easy way to get from Zuckerberg Ugly's address in memory to Jordan's wallet in memory. And uh, basically that kind of root node of the linked list is starting at index two of this array. So that's an example of chaining. And then similarly, we have probing, where as opposed to actually going and creating a whole new linked list, we just continue to store everything in our hash map, but we just look for the first open available slot after the location of the hash. So in this case, since we know that Jordan's wallet is hashing to index two, we keep going to the right from index two, we see that index three is empty, and that's where we're going to put Jordan's wallet. 
Okay, so what does it actually mean that we have collisions? How does it impact the performance of our hash map? Well, as we can think about, it's no longer the case that every operation is going to be O of 1 because sometimes um, you're going to actually have to search through, say, the entire array itself via probing, or you're going to have a relatively large linked list that you have to search through. And uh, while we haven't covered linked list, we basically have to scan through that in linear time. So we're no longer getting this really good complexity that we had before. So how can we kind of um, actually get the performance of our hash map back to what it should be? Well, basically we want to be reducing the number of collisions. Um, and what this really means is that we want to be spreading out our elements a little bit better. So again, like I said, it would be really bad if all these operations happened in O of n time. So what can we do to actually improve this? Well, before we discuss that, let me quickly go into an important metric about a hash map called the load factor. So let's imagine there are n elements in the hash map you know, n keys basically have been put in, and there are k number of potential buckets that, you know, these keys could be hashed to, which means there are k entries of that underlying array. We're going to introduce this concept called load factor, where load factor is basically the ratio between n and k. And as that load factor approaches one, it means the hash map is getting more and more filled up, and as a result, we're going to have more and more collisions, and as a result, our performance is going to get even worse. So what we really want to do is say every single time that load factor is getting closer to one, we want to be able to resize our hash map. And this is a very important part of dealing with hash maps so that you can maintain good performance so that you're often operating closer to that O of one as opposed to O of n. So basically, again, if our load factor is too high, and when I say too high, this is kind of a number that can be set experimentally and often has been, then we want to basically go ahead and increase the size of our underlying array. We can reallocate a new one, and then we can go ahead and rehash all of our elements in the actual hash map so that they get evenly distributed amongst the new memory. So as you can see, um, we're starting out with kind of this hash map where the array is of size four, but the performance is gonna be pretty bad because three of the elements are in the same bucket. So we're going to increase the size of our list to size eight and rehash everything. And now again, because everything is in its own bucket, we can have O of one operations. In terms of the actual time complexity of resizing, we know that um, basically uh, this is obviously an operation that is in theory linear time because we're going to have to rehash all these elements where all these elements, you know, there are going to be n of them where n was the number of elements before. So that is a linear operation. However, similarly to kind of the logic we did with dynamically sized lists, we can justify this being considered O of 1 amortized time. The reason for this being that when we actually do rehash a bunch of elements and we rehash them into a new place, we know that the ratio of the number of rehashed elements to the number of put elements that came before it. So for example, you know, we had to say put in four elements before we could rehash all four elements. If you divide four by four, that's always going to be one. And similarly, if we were resizing in the future, we would have to do eight puts in total before we do that eight rehashing. So that's kind of the general gist here is that the ratio is remaining constant, hence it is constant amortized time. And that way we can maintain that O of one time complexity. All right, fellas, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm gonna make sure to go uh, try and do some probing myself in a little bit, but uh, have a good day and I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna keep trying to be creative with new ideas and please let me know in the comments if you have any more.